Hey, welcome to Family Church. We are a diverse, spirit-filled, life-giving church, healing hearts, building relationships, and developing leaders. My name is Pastor John Mark. I'm so excited that you've connected to our page today. Be sure to grab a notebook, a pen, a paper, your phone, however you want to take notes and get ready for today's message. Everyone here knows that I work very hard on our staff culture to be productive and consistent. We iron and re-iron our systems and our culture to ensure that we have the best possible outcome for the church and the health of our team. So what I want to do today is I want to talk about how personality plays a role in making friends. How personality plays a role in making friends. Because there's some of you today that find it very easy to make friends, and there's some of you that find it very hard to make friends. There's some of you that, yes, you have a great family, but on a friend level, you're very lonely, and you want friends. So we want to talk about the day. So we're going to go through the panel here. We're going to ask your name, your position on staff, whether you are an introvert or an extrovert, and how you would identify your personality. Right, I'll go first. Hi, if you don't know me, I'm Cynthia McKelvey. I am the business administrator here at Family Church. And I'm also the wife to this sexy stud right here. <laughs> 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 okay. um, if I had to describe my personality, I would have to say that I am an extroverted introvert. Now that might sound weird, it does. but basically what it means <laughs> is that I'm um, very friendly. I do like people. I talk a lot in comfortable situations. A but lot. A lot. <laughs> <laughs> But I actually like to be alone. Actually, I love to be alone. Um, I come from a huge family. I'm surrounded by you guys. We have three kids, so it's not often that we have a long time where it's just quiet. And so I really, really enjoy it. I enjoy the quiet. And I can only people for so long. So like if I'm around a lot of people, there will come a time where I have to remove myself and just kind of recharge and then come back into the world. What kind of personality type would you say you are? I'm not sure fully what you're asking. <laughs> I'm not. I said I'm an extroverted introvert. She's a right here. So Defen she's a defender. defender. She's an SI. She's an Enneagram 9, Wing 8. And working genius is really cool. Like, if, if, if you have the opportunity to, like, suggest something to your employer, the working genius has revolutionized our team and how we operate. She's a TW, which means she's tenacity and wonderer. So a tenacity person likes to check things off a checklist and get a job done. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, list, list, list. Anyway. It's so, okay, so to answer him then, it's interesting because I don't like conflict. I like things to be very peaceful and calm, but I don't have a problem handling conflict. That's the Enneagram 9 is a peacemaker. Yes. So they avoid conflict, but she's a wing 8, which means she's Puerto Rican. <laughs> And you know what I'm saying. You know what I'm saying. She's all I mean. <laughs> until Walcott comes out. <laughs> so when you come story. from a large, aggressive family, you either got to figure it out or you disappear. <laughs> you shut down. All right, well, I'm in. So my name's Adriana, and I am full. Hello. I am full Enneagram 8. It's not just the wing. That's who I am. So I guess I'm like 100% Puerto Rican. I'm just kidding. <laughs> um, so what that means for me is I am the commander. So I kind of walk in the room, and you know that I'm there, and I say it how it is, and it's very strong, and I apologize for my face often. I don't mean it. It's just how I am. Um, the opposite of Cindy, I am an introverted extrovert. So I'm in the middle, but I lean more extrovert. I do enjoy being alone, but I don't like being by myself. So whatever that looks like. Um, I like people around me, but only certain people. Too many people will drain me, and I'll, I'll feel like I have to kind of put on this, like, hey, how you doing? Hi, hi, hi. And then by the end of the day, usually Sundays, after being around everyone and saying hello, I'm like, time for a nap and ready to recharge. Um, but yeah, so I, I, I'm not as extroverted as some people are. Hmm, what could that possibly be? I'm an extra, 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 extrovert. All right? 
I love people. I don't get drained by Sundays. I'm like, oh my gosh, tell me more. Can I pray for you? How can we? Who are you? What are you doing after service? I'm everywhere. I'm everywhere. And, I, and, and that's my, my personality. That's uh, through large groups excite me. So as a, as a kid, my, my parents' punishment was for me was like, all right, you need to go sit by yourself if you're ready to become part of the family. Children are being to be seen and not heard. Please, please don't. I was like, please, I'll do anything. I, I promise I'll, I'll be good. Please don't leave me alone. And <laughs> I need people. So I'm uh, Enneagram 7 with an 8 wing. I guess I'm half Puerto Rican. No. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so funny. And my working genius is an invention and wonder. So I, I'm always creating. So... I need people with tenacity to help me get things done. <laughs> so, that's it. Yeah. And if you're wondering what the opposite of Pastor John Mark is, <laughs> it's me. I am an introvert. Um, I'm very reserved and quiet, laid back. She's I'm really, really excited right now. Yeah. <laughs> like, you need to, you need to calm down. Calm down. You need to be wild. I am an Enneagram 6 with wing 5, so I am labeled a loyalist. I like to be safe and secure. And then with the five, I'm a thinker. So I'm always observing and processing everything. So that's why I'm a lot more quiet, because I'm like, hmm, what's going on? <laughs> what's up? My name is Pastor Chris, and I am the worship pastor here at Family Church. Yeah. So I'm an Enneagram 3, which means that I'm an achiever. I want to feel successful, and I want to try to accomplish success in every area of my life. I'm also a G with the working genes, which means that I'm a gatherer. Um, although I am a gatherer, I am actually an introvert, though I operate in an extroverted world. So um, I like to be alone, but with people, if that makes sense. <laughs> So when it comes to team building and being a builder of teams, the G on the working genes means galvanizer. And Pastor Chris is the only galvanizer on our entire team, believe it or not. But since he's been here, he's taken our worship team from like eight people to like 45. <laughs> so it's, it's a gift. So when you begin to look at this working genius, which we love, it's like most people take jobs in their weakness and they try to get better, I can get better, I can get better. Probably not. Probably not. You're probably going to be bad at your job your entire career. And that's why you're going to be stuck at like a level two or a level three in your organization. If you got a job that was actually in your genius, what you are actually great at, you will go from being tolerated to being celebrated, Mm -hmm. And you'll do a much better job. But that's neither here nor there. We're not talking about business today. We're talking about making friends. I'm Mike McKelvey. I'm the lead pastor here at Family Church. I am actually... I am actually somewhat of an introvert. Um, large crowds and lots of noise overwhelm me on a social level. Um, I like small groups of people with deep, intentional conversations. I love coaching. I love problem solving and dealing with those sort of things. Um, I'm a wanderer. Uh, wanderers are always asking the question, why? Why are we doing it like this? Can we do it differently? Can we make it better? Do we have to do church the way it's been done for the last 2,000 years? What was the book of Acts, the end-all, be-all of how church had to be? Is no one creating anything new since the Bible was written? Come on, somebody. <laughs> um, anyway. But I'm also 99% assertive, which comes across as extrovert. I'm actually not an extrovert, but because I'm 99% assertive, I can walk up to anybody at any time, introduce myself, say what's up, go do whatever I got to do, but I hate making phone calls. I hate making phone calls. I'll, I'll let anybody make phone calls but me. I hate, like, scheduling appointments. I hate getting up and going on, like, a cafeteria line to go get food, like, buffets. Oh, Buffets give me anxiety. <laughs> I do. Like, I hate getting up out of my seat to go get my food in front of people. Anyway, it's, I know it's weird. It's weird. Anyway, why are we talking about this today? Because it is important to understand yourself. Who are you and how are you coming across to other people? Watch this. In Lamentations 340, it says, let us search out and examine our ways. Why do you do what you do? What is the motivating factor 
behind the decisions that you make. So let's look at this. Pastor Chris being an Enneagram 3, he's an achiever, and, and, and he, want, he said he wants to feel successful, but that's part of it. The Enneagram 3 really just wants to look successful. It doesn't matter if they actually are successful. <laughs> Come on, the person who's an Enneagram 3. You want everyone to believe that you have achieved. It's called keeping up with the Joneses. A lot of people who are Enneagram 3 achievers are in debt up to their eyeballs trying to look like somebody else. Pastor Chris is not. He actually has a company that helps you fix your credit. If you have any credit problems, he can help you fix that. <laughs> But watch this. The Bible keeps going. 2 Corinthians 13, 5. Examine yourself to see if you're in the faith. Examine yourself. Why am I doing what I'm doing? What am I doing? Why am I doing it? Proverbs 18, 2. Fools find no pleasure in understanding, but delight in airing their own opinions. Yeah. I don't know why we're talking about personality stuff at church. <laughs> I'm not going to say what you are, but Proverbs says, <laughs> fools find no pleasure in understanding, but delight in airing their own opinions. Galatians 6, 4 says, each one should test their own actions. Test your actions. Why are you doing what you're doing? Why do you go about trying to make friends the way that you make friends? Let's take a moment. Let's talk to our staff about challenges, struggles in making friends. So for me, I find it difficult to make friends. And the reason, well, there's actually multiple reasons. The first one being that even though I'm friendly, I'm not actually that outgoing. So if I'm dropped in a place that I'm not comfortable Her in. Her assertive level is very low. Yeah. So like if I go to a party and I don't know anybody but the person that invited me, I'm probably just going to hang out by the appetizers and just watch the party go on. I'm not going to go up to somebody and make small talk. Um, and then also when I do finally kind of make a friend, I'm so not clean, because again, I like to be alone, <laughs> that I think sometimes people feel like I don't actually want to hang out with them, because I don't call, or I don't maybe text, or whatever, but it's not that I don't want to hang out, I just don't think about it, like on a day-to-day -day basis. Now, if you call me, ask me out, whatever, I'm probably almost always going to say yes, and we're going to have a great time, but on my side of it, I just, I mean, even my own family would be like, are you alive? <laughs> like, I just don't <laughs> think about it. And then the third one is weird because it has to do with my position in the church. I'll get people who either feel intimidated because they feel like they have to act some sort of way because I'm the pastor's wife, or in reverse, I'll get the people that want to be part of the in crowd, like the inner circle, which I think is really weird. <laughs> We're not that cool. Yeah. <laughs> So when you first tend to meet people who like are almost like aggressive in trying to be friends with you, it's kind of like, why are they trying to be friends with me? So that's, that's me. Yeah, for me, I have a hard time because making friends is, is difficult for me because of the way I come across when you first get to know me sometimes. So I think I, I'm very straightforward, say it how it is. I really value honesty, but I think sometimes I'm just too honest for people. And so it's good and bad. I think it's good to have a friend that'll tell you how it is. But sometimes you just want someone to smile and tell you that you look great in your dress. <laughs> and that, that ain't me. If you don't look good, I'm like, girl, don't wear that dress, please. <laughs> I ain't taking pictures with you all night. No, I didn't. So I, I think it can be difficult because I come across so strong. And I think as an Enneagram 8, it's just like we're a lot. Like our presence is known. Where There's just those people that they walk in the room. Like Pastor Mike said, assertive. We're just here, this is who we are, and not even realizing maybe how I come across, but this is how I am. And so I think when people come to me and they want to be my friend, if I like plow past you and I don't even say hello, it's not because I didn't want to be your friend, but I was going towards the appetizers or whatever. I saw someone I knew, like I, you know, it's just I'm very straightforward. So I think it's difficult to make friends when you don't realize how much space you take where there are quieter people or more introverted people that may be trying to be your friend. And I just, I don't realize. Sorry. <laughs> so one of my challenges, since I'm such an extrovert, like, well, we'll just take the party, for instance. I'll be at a party, but I'll spend my whole time hosting. Hey, how you doing? Oh, my gosh, that dress. <laughs> Did you ever think about this? And I'll never take the time to make a deep connection. So then I walk away from that party feeling alone. Like, man, did anybody even really care about me? I was doing all this stuff. I was handing out drinks. I was talking. But nobody, did anybody see me? 
for me, I, I desire deep relationships. I desire not shallow relationships, even though I may come across and, say, and have these shallow relationships with people, but I would really, everybody desires a deep relationship. Somebody that knows your soul, that can look at you and you're like, oh, I'm, I'm doing great, look at me, I'm so great. No, there's something going on in you, what's up? And be able to call you, call the person to reel you out of you. And I, and I wonder what I would, in finding the relationships as I discover myself, is like, who would I be without relying on my trauma to project? Right? I don't, want to, I don't want you to be my friend, or you may not ever see me. You know, so let's, some of the I mean, that's the funny thing about Pastor John Mark, is that he, he very often operates in the spiritual gift of prophecy, and he will call people, or someone will come to his mind, and he'll call them right when they need a conversation or a phone call. And, and so a person who is highly extrovert, they have so many friends that they actually feel like they have no friends. Yeah. Because who's calling me yeah. when I'm in my bottom? Who's calling me? Who's thinking about me? And so someone who's highly extroverted, who's your very, very, very best friend? My brother. Your brother, right? Family. Big Tim. <laughs> right? Family. The closest person to them because they're friends with so many people that that trust isn't there that they're actually his friend back. Because of my Enneagram type, type three, the achiever, um, it, it's hard for me to make friends because from the jump, I'm trying to figure out the other person because I want to see if the relationship will prove fruitful. Uh, if I feel like it has potential to explode or implode, then I stay away. Um, if, if I feel like um, our friendship together can grow and become something great, then uh, I put time into it. but it's me protecting myself. And that's just how it's always been. But once I've opened up to someone and we've gotten to a certain level of access, I'm your friend for life. You need me, I'm there, like we're good. So also I don't want to have to see our friendship end because I let you in too fast. Yeah. Yeah, what's hard for me is I have major abandonment issues. So because I've been in the church world for 40 years, this church specifically for 40 years of my life, I've seen members come in and members go out. People who were high-ranking volunteers and staff members and then watch them leave. And part of my heart would be taken with that relationship. And so I, I had gotten to a place where I was so guarded that I'm not going to let anybody in. And really, I do spend the most of my time with the team. And we're very protective of who comes onto the team because of that. But he, here's what I want you to know. It is important for you to understand yourself and how you come across to other people. How, how do people receive you? How do you come across? Do you come across as shy? Do you come across as angry? Like, what does your face look like? I'll say that to staff members when they come in. I'm like, hey, everything good? Yeah. Well, they need to fix your face. <laughs> Because again, I'm the person, if I ask you, hey, what's up, do you need to talk? And you say, no, I'm good, and I know that that's a lie, now I'm going to get a little, all right, then fix your face. <laughs> Go give yourself five minutes, walk back outside, and then come back in like you're ready, like nothing's wrong. But if there is something wrong, yeah, but I don't want to get into that. I'm giving you space to get into that. I'm giving you room right now. I'll give you a 10-minute, 15-minute conversation. What's up? Because we can't have yuck in the office. Yeah. We work too close together. We don't want yuck in our relationships. We don't want yuck hanging out after work. So let's just get it out. You got something against me? You got a problem? Let's talk about it. No, 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 no. All right, then fix your face. All right, that's the statement. Then just fix your face. Because listen, people are not going to approach stank. We talked about that last week, right? So um, you will constantly be a person who's trying to fit in with other people that are not like you, and then you'll blame it on other people if you don't understand yourself, okay? So now listen, I know that we're talking a lot about our work environment, and maybe you don't have the, the power to hire and fire and create the right culture on your staff, I get that, but you are in control of the friends that you hang with. Yeah. Right. You are in control of the family members that you hang out with. Yeah. You are in control of that. Yeah. 
And I know that a lot of us like to blame it. Well, every time I hang out with so-and-so, they just make me crazy. <laughs> they cut crazy out your life. Amen. And you don't have to have that. You don't have to be so afraid of being alone that you hang out with people that literally drain the life out of you. So let's talk about that. Let's talk about our, our, our culture. Are we friends in office and out of office? So for the most part, most of our um, staff and us are friends. Um, some closer than others, simply just because of like stage of life and that kind of thing. But we all get along really well. And Mike and I have an open door policy at our house. Um, we've created that culture where people just kind of come in and out. I mean, half our staff has the code to our doors and they literally just walk in. <laughs> <laughs> um, and we're cool with it. We enjoy it. We tell them, you know, school's open. We got no food. You can bring it with you. <laughs> uh, Literally. Yeah. 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 Yesterday's message. School is open, but I ain't got no food and I got no soda. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just offering the pool. Yeah. <laughs> but like I said, like we're just like a family. And like to go with what Adriana was saying earlier, where she likes to be alone, but with people, yeah. we've got the, the relationship where she'll just like, I'll look outside and she's like hanging out by my pool. So she's like with us, but she's still alone. Or many other times, yeah. she's been on a couch like on her computer and I'm sound asleep. So it's we're okay. together. I'm not so alone. alone. <laughs> <laughs> and that's just, that's how our staff is yeah. with us. I think for me, I mean, I appreciate the fact that we have um, the culture that we hang out outside of this. Um, for me, I also have Liana, that's my best friend. Yeah, she yeah. over there. And I think what works for us is we were friends before she got hired here at the church, but in her getting hired and then learning more about personalities, I realized why we kind of work too is because she's not like me. So sometimes you got to get around people that aren't like you that can tell you, no, that's probably not the way that that happened. Let's tell the story again. And then she doesn't just do what, like, listen to what I say and say, yeah, you're right. We should hate them. Or like, yeah, you're always right. Everything you say is perfect. She has a different perspective. Um, my sister's another one that she's an Enneagram 9, like Cindy, where they just have like perspective of all the things. And so having those kind of people around me, I think it's helpful, especially for someone like me, because I'm like, no, this is what it is. And they're like, no, maybe it was this, or maybe it was this. Or they won't actually tell me what it is. They still just give all the options and then let me decide what I'm going to believe is truth. But yeah, I think working with each other and then hanging out outside, I get to see the different perspectives of how it works in work and then outside. It's like, I can choose to be with you versus. Yeah, we were raised in a culture where it was like, leadership is lonely at the top. It's lonely being a leader and being an industry leader and making the world different. It's lonely doing that. And, and, and we were like, that's, that's gotta be bull. I think leadership is only lonely if you don't ever take anybody with you. Yeah. I think leadership is lonely if you want to avoid all sorts of pain. Yeah. But there's pain that happens in having close relationships. Yeah. Right. Come on, somebody. Yeah. If, if you only want friends around you that agree with everything you say and everything you do, then you really don't want a friend. You want a dog. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, Pastor. That's a good. really well-trained well dog. <laughs> But Pastor John Mark and I, Pastor John Mark's been on staff for 15 years. Yeah. We've been friends since he was 16 years old. And, and, and yeah, the lines sometimes can be blurred between are we hanging out right now or am I the leader of the organization right now? And so there are times where, man, me and him are hanging out, we're having a great time. But then I got to come in the next day and be like, hey, bud, you've been on FaceTime for eight hours with your brand new baby. I know that you're a proud papa and that you just had a son. Yeah. <laughs> But well, like, stop looking at the baby monitor. <laughs> I'm trying. Right? I'm we'll, have, we'll have intentional conversations. And again, you want that with friends. If you, if you just want a friend that thinks that you are just Queen B or King B, that's gross. Like, you, got, you need some counsel. <laughs> uh, for me, it was a little, it was, in, well, it was brand new for me coming, me and my wife when we came for the first time and like breakfast. Uh, so the staff eats breakfast together every uh, Sunday morning and we lunch together 
every day um, while we're here in office. So that was weird to me because the culture that we came from, um, that was not the case at all. And so sitting down at the table and being like, oh, yeah, like, so you actually want to hear conversations about my life and about my day and about what I think about life and um, different things going on in the world. It was very cool um, that uh, Pastor Mike has, like, put that culture together. Very life-giving. I came from um, a culture that was life-sucking in some aspects yeah. of the, uh, it, it is what it is but it, it was in some um, some ways and coming to this it felt weird because I was trying to figure out like what's the catch when is it going to drop <laughs> but it's just what it is like we like each other <laughs> at least try to we try to we like try each other like <laughs> so this sermon this sermon this panel this discussion today I know it's very different for church and if this is your first time this is not normally how it is but we wanted to try something different and we wanted to put the power back in the hands of each individual person. I know that it's easy to become victim mentality when it comes to friends. I've got no friends. Every friend stabs me in the back. It's so hard to make friends. But here, here's what I want to ask you this. It, will you surround yourself with life-giving people that push you towards your goal and inspire you and enhance your life? Like, that's your choice. I've got a group of guys that we text each other almost every day. And I heard a quote one day. It said, you are the average of your closest five friends. You are the average of your closest five friends. So I, I, I took that quote. I pasted it into my friend's chat room. Uh, there's about 12 of us in there. And I said, hey, which one of you is bringing my average down? <laughs> <laughs> and like, nobody really answered me. So I was like, I'm bringing the average down. <laughs> is it me? <laughs> Watch this. Proverbs. 2717, as iron sharpens iron, so a man sharpens the countenance of his friends. Yeah. That, that's the epitome of having the right friends. They make you better. Iron sharpens iron. Yeah. I love that. Pastor, I love that, I love that verse because I started to think about where does iron come from? It starts out as something called an ore. It's like a stone, a rock, and it has to be smelted to be formed into a sword or something that keeps things sharp. And in your life, are you uh, the one that's sharpening or you're the one that's dulling? Are you dulling your friends? Well, I'm, everything's so terrible. You're always complaining about how life is so terrible and everything is, is just constant complaining. And your friend, you never add anything to the relationship. You're always taking, can you pray for me? Can you do all these things for me? Can you pick up my kids at eight? Can you do all these things? We never add to uh, the relationship. But we have to choose to get into the, we call it the crucible. I, I love the personality profiles and the word of God. Get into the crucible, which that's how you melt down iron and form yourself into a sword. Allow the Holy Spirit, allow God to form you and sharpen your edge. Yeah. If you notice in that scripture, it says, so a man sharpens the countenance of his friends. If you never, here's the thing, if you've never put your friends in position to win, then you're a bad friend. Yeah. Every one of these people up on this place, this stage right here, has put me in a position to win in my life and financially, socially, and the way I organize things. People need to, your friends need to put you in position to win. An issue with me in my, in my, in one of my lives, in my life, is that in Proverbs 18, 24, it says, a, a man of many companions may come to ruin. So a person like me has many friends. I may come to ruin a companion. But then there's another scripture which talks about in a multitude of counselors, there's safety, there's wisdom. So the question you must ask yourself, and I ask myself this, am I just a companion, a person just to pass the time with, or am I a counselor? Am I a person that contributes to the relationship and receives from the relationship? Mm -hmm. So iron sharpens. Yeah. Yeah. Even going with my friendship with Adriana, me and her are like polar opposites. They so, sat us on opposite sides of the, the <laughs> stage. <No. laughs> but she's extremely assertive. So me walking into the room and observing how people react to that, then I'm like, mm. <laughs> so I will safely do a certain percentage of that. So it's helping me step out of my comfort zone and, cra and grow based off of her while I'm helping her in other areas. So it's like a balance, it's an exchange, and that's what we can respect each other for, that we are different, but we know why we're different. And it works. It's good. Yeah. I yeah. think it's important. I think, like, to show off for your guys' relationship, what's important is also acceptance. Accept acceptance of, like, yourself yeah. and how you process and how you hang out with people. Like, I know that I like quiet and calm, and I don't like to be out all the time. We have 
we had a friend who was always doing something, and I was exhausted just looking at the lights. <laughs> <laughs> but at the same time, I you have to accept how your friends are. So like we never had a problem with each other. We were complete opposites, and. I accepted that she was like that, and I would make the effort to actually go and hang out randomly. And she was completely okay with the fact that I wasn't gonna be at everything that she was at, but she would still give the invite because we still like to be invited, even though we like to be alone. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> but we were able to accept the differences that we had in each other to have that friendship. And I think a lot of times we get stuck in like, this is the way that we are and this is the way that we wanna be. And if somebody doesn't fit that, then it's like, well, I can't talk to them. But it's the differences a lot of times that I think strengthen and makes the relationship what it is. Yeah, if you don't surround yourself with friends that sharpen you and make you better, you're probably surrounding yourself with friends that pull you down, yeah. feed your flaws, yeah. and encourage the evil side of your flesh. Yeah. Mm. That's why a lot of addicts have friends that are addicts. Yeah. Let's go get high together. Let's go get drunk together. Let's go party together. Let's go spend all of our money together on a Friday when we just got paid. It's just feeding the negative side of your life. First Corinthians 15.33 says, Do not be deceived. Bad company corrupts good character. So yeah, you might be a great person, but you hang around bad people. Yeah. You're gonna get you're gonna get stuck at some point. Yeah. Right? You're gonna be you're gonna be known by the people that you surround yourself with. You're gonna get a reputation based upon the people that you're hanging out with. Yeah. So if your friends and your squad has a bad reputation. It ain't going to go good. Yeah. Uh, for me, um, I didn't realize uh, that that was my story. Um, growing up, I grew up in church. I did all, you know, all the boxes were checked. But I got associated with some people that weren't great people, but I found them in church. So that's... Yeah, not all church people are good people. Not all church people are good people. <laughs> uh, but, you know, I associated myself <laughs> with those people, and I found myself going down a path that I didn't want to go down. Um, but we still went to church. We still served. We still did the church stuff, but still going to hell <laughs> at the same time. <laughs> <laughs> and so uh, I didn't realize that... Um, you were praising Jesus on your way to hell. On my way to hell. <laughs> <laughs> so um, I didn't realize that I could, again, because of the wanting to be an achiever, I didn't know that I could cut people off and be okay. I, I had to, and it ended up being fruitful for my life. Um, but it, it, it corrupts good character for sure. Yeah. So we want to give, give you guys some advice um, to find out a little bit more about who you are. We use a website called Understand Myself. It's a big five personality assessment. Um, there is a fee associated with it. We don't make anything from it, but it's just a source resource that we use. And what's great about it is you can tag other people in it. And then you can see how you work together, uh, how you are in a relationship together. So husbands and wives can kind of see how your personalities mesh and where your strengths and weaknesses are in that personality, which is really, really great. Another one is called the working genius. I love that, especially if you're a business owner or, or a, an entrepreneur uh, or a supervisor. Man, have everybody take the working genius on your team and you can begin to see people's strengths and put them in their genius because the opposite of a genius is what you're going to struggle with. Yeah. Don't ever give somebody a, a responsibility or a task that's in their weakness that they're going to struggle with. Uh, ever since we learned this, we are like, hey, Pastor Chris is, the, like I said, the only galvanizer in our team. So we're like, hey, help us build teams. Build this for us. Build this team for us. Go, go get people to help us with this because that's what his genius is to do that. And then they'll come to me and John Mark and be like, all right, we need an idea about something. So me and him will get together and be like, all right, let's try all these abstract ideas to try to think of something because that's our genius. They'll call me into a lot of planning meetings and say, hey, here's the plan. What are we missing? What's going to make this better? Because that's my genius. Now, to make me have to do all the tasks and check them all off to get there, no, that ain't going to work for me. So understanding yourself understanding your temperaments, and how you connect with other people. We hope this is beneficial for you today. Let us pray a blessing over you. Father, we thank you today that we could talk about some practical aspects in church today. Lord, I lift up those who are struggling to make friends that feel a little lonely. Maybe they have a lot of acquaintances. They've got a lot of followers on social media, but they don't know who they would call in the middle of a crisis. Lord, help us to find those friends. Send the divine connections, the divine 
uh, relationships that we need right now in our lives. And Lord, maybe if we are surrounded by some bonehead friends that we need to get rid of, help us to make that separation in a life-giving way and, 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 and get into a place of peace and tranquility in our relationships. Lord, I bless everyone who is here today. They're blessed coming in. They'll be blessed going out. Everything they set their hands to will prosper and be successful in Jesus' name. Amen. We love you. Amen. Thank you for watching today's message. My name is Ashley, and if this message has made an impact in your life in any way, I'd like to ask you to do a couple of things. First, we want you to like and subscribe to our channel and join us right here every Sunday at 9.30 a.m. or 11.30 a.m. The next thing I'm gonna ask you to do is take a next step on your journey, and we would love to help you do that. You can head on over to familychurchny.com or email us at team at familychurchny.com to get started today.